without further ado into our next session, uh, we are going to be looking at frictionless consumption and unintended consequences. And I'm joined on stage by Pia Sak Ukushnukan, who's the managing director at Nyan Tidla. Uh, PSAG is recognized as representing a new generation of executives driving change in finance. And for the next 10 minutes, PSAC is going to be talking all things frictionless commerce. So over to you. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much. So I run a financial inclusion company in Thailand called Nyantit Law. You know, our mission is to help provide credit to the underbanked. But my session today isn't about the underbanked. It's actually about the overbanked. And what triggered my interest in overborrowing is actually a trend that we began to notice among our younger employees. And this was several years ago. Our company offers financial health clinics where we help our staff manage their finances. And you know, one of the case studies that I saw, I felt was quite worrying. So allow me to introduce you to, to Joe, right? Just to conceal his identity. By the time he was 32, he had already dug, in, dug himself into a really deep hole financially. He'd maxed out several credit cards, and then he'd already gone on to borrow from different loan sharks. And the worst part is that the debt he incurred was all for consumption purposes. He bought gadgets, he went on vacations, he ate nice meals, went on dates, and he purchased gifts for, you know, for family that he couldn't really afford. He'd amassed the equivalent of about $50,000 in debt. And that's a lot of money for someone whose monthly income is actually less than $1,000 per month. And as we you know, started to see more cases like this, you know, I started to wonder if this phenomenon was actually unique to Thailand. And as it turns out, there actually seems to be a global trend for this. We found articles across all continents, you know, whether it's South America, Asia, India, Europe, North America, you name it. Uh, people are borrowing for the first time at a younger age. They're borrowing higher balances and they use more credit more frequently to purchase their finances. And in tandem, savings rates are plummeting among the younger generation. So, so what's going on? You know, did people around the world just up and decide to borrow like there's no tomorrow? And the core of my message today is really about showing how there's a few trends driven by the current digital behaviors that we think are co connected uh, and may lead to overconsumption and over indebtedness. The first is social media. By now, most of us are aware that there are some addictive properties to social media, which is effectively an always on advertising platform that companies use to target clients with much more precision than ever before. And potentially what's worse than advertising is actually peer pressure. There just seems to be a natural desire for people to want to keep up with the Joneses. You know, people see what we call these super moment images, and they're images that are curated, they're cropped, they're edited. And something about seeing someone you know share a good experience triggers you to, to, to want to follow suit. It triggers some sort of demand. And a few swipes later, you know, we end up in an e-commerce site that allows people to check out reviews and compare prices of the products that you just saw your friend post. Uh, e-commerce companies have become really good at making it convenient to buy stuff. They figured out over a decade ago that the more frictionless the buying experience, the more people buy. You know, and if that's not enough, the logistics companies have started offering next day or even same day delivery. And essentially removing the weight uh, which used to be the, the largest inconvenience and the largest source of friction for online buying. And lastly, financing. If you can't afford you know, what you want to buy, don't worry. You can pay later in installments. And today, all the rage in fintechs is, is buy now, pay later. So it's my hypothesis that the combination of experience improvements across different categories of, in, of businesses uh, social media, e-commerce, logistics, and lending are contributing to a global overconsumption and overborrowing among the young. So who's accountable? Is it the consumer? And it turns out that, well, we're all built with this biological flaw. Our brains are naturally lazy. Humans are just hardwired to take the path of least resistance. And business has figured out that you know, our brains are more often than not on energy saving mode and actually quite vulnerable. So once demand is stimulated and the path is frictionless, the rest is really an uphill struggle for self-control. 
Now, over the past decade, you know, new, new jargon has been introduced in the business community. Uh, it's cloaked in language that indicates that what the businesses want to do is to improve customer experience and improve convenience. And people with jobs titled UX and UI designer, uh, choice architect, they're hired to create frictionless customer journeys and nudge consumer behaviors. Well, it's not really a choice if your brain is on autopilot. And consumers don't stand a chance. You know, if there's a small army of professionals working day and night to mani manipulate your cognitive weaknesses. And unfortunately at this time, you know, I don't have much to offer beyond these observations, you know, potentially maybe some partial solutions. So what I'd like to do now is to share with you a campaign that our company launched at the end of 2019 through this short video. ในกรณีที่คุณพยายามเตือนคนอื่นไม่ให้เป็นหนี้แต่พวกเขาไม่อยากฟังข้อแนะนำก็คือให้เปลี่ยนวิธีพูดเป็นแบบนี้เป็นหนี้เนี่ยจะได้ขยันไงไปกูเลยพี่ตุยตายดิของมันต้องมีนะอะไรอ่ะหนี้นอกระบบห้าหมื่นเนาะครับผมหอมค่าบ้านค่ารถต่อจะให้รู้ว่าแบบเอ๊ะจริงๆแล้วมันมีบางอย่างที่เรากำลังทำอยู่หรือเปล่าที่อยากจะทำให้ชีวิตเราชิบหายขอให้คิดดีๆคิดก่อนที่จะเป็นนี้So for those of you who are interested and want to watch the full version of the video, you can scan that QR code on the screen. And the, the most remarkable thing about the campaign is that we ignited a national conversation. Instead of broadly sharing the video on social media or hitting the like button, people were tagging specific friends and family who they wanted to warn. Uh, they were using our content to express concern to, to their loved ones about their habits. Um, and even more remarkable is that other lenders in Thailand started to introduce similar warnings and messages in their media content. Um, I still don't have any, you know, anyone at, at, to point the finger at. Um, we don't know who's really accountable, but I guess we're all collectively responsible for helping the next generation avoid saddling themselves with unproductive debt. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we don't have any comprehensive solutions to what we think is this growing problem. Um, and we think equipping consumers with awareness to, to recognize seemingly harmless, you know, but, but potentially dangerous situations, um, you know, and it can, it can help them alert themselves to reduce vulnerability and exploitation while, while promoting self-restraint. And, you know, for the next, I guess, solution, partial solution, we think is to remind business leaders that it's, it's important to have empathy and to, rec to recognize that there could be unintended unintended consequences as we continue to chase our short-term profit targets. In fact, you know, companies that really care about long-term impact and social responsibility are beginning to introduce what's called intentional friction to help consumers prevent unintended consequences that might arise when their brains are in you know, mindless autopilot mode. 
Um, and in this case, maybe we can do our part in helping the younger generation avoid the pitfalls of overborrowing. Thank you.